So, you want to get good at DT. Well, let me help you. This video is going to be about tips that I personally use to get better at OSU, primarily with DT, so the tips are going to be based on my personal opinion. Therefore, if this video isn't able to help you out, my bad. But for now, let's get started on getting you to be a DT Daddy Circle Clicking Master. This is a concept that I don't see many people talk about. I personally believe that it's quite important and something that people should know. Well, let's say that you're a 4 digit player with an unfamiliar tablet area. When you play, for example, a 4 to 6 star Nomad map with simple patterns, it's slow enough for you to take your time to read and aim notes accurately. When you play the same map with DT, the map is a lot faster due to the high AR and BPM. This means that you have less time in between notes which makes it more difficult to properly read and name notes. You're more likely to miss a lot of notes because you're not used to your tablet area. That's when your muscle memory comes into play. Muscle memory by definition is a form of procedural memory that involves consolidating a specific motor task into memory through repetition. If your muscle memory is well established for your tablet area, you are able to react quicker due to not having to think about aiming as much. Your body tends to naturally aim and react towards where the notes are based on your reading. The process of attaining muscle memory will be different depending on the person. There are some people who can change their tablet area a lot and quickly adapt to it while others can't. I don't recommend changing your tablet area too frequently. From my personal experience, muscle memory took some time to obtain but it was definitely worth the effort. I haven't changed my tablet area in the past 3 years so I'm very comfortable with it. Patience is very important in many aspects of OSU and I believe muscle memory is one of them. It should constantly change your tablet area. I feel like it will mess with your muscle memory and stunt your progression to some extent. Ultimately, it's your decision to change your tablet area, but just keep in mind what you can gain and lose from making that change. Just like aiming, reading each note individually will be quite difficult when playing with DT. In situations like this, you have to start using your peripheral vision. Most players already do this unconsciously, but I feel like giving more exposure to the concept will help players understand that it's an important and useful skill. Peripheral vision is vision as it occurs outside the point of fixation, which is away from the center of gaze or when viewed at large angles in the corner of one's eye. Think of it this way. When you stare at the center of your monitor, you're able to clearly read anything that's in the center of your monitor. However, the further things get from the center of your monitor and closer to the corners of your monitor, it gets harder to read what's on your monitor accurately. Of course, if possible, you would want to read each note. But because the notes get too fast, sometimes you have to rely on your peripheral vision. That's why it's much better for you to get used to it. To make it easier for you, you can also push your monitor further away if your desk has room and is deep enough. Just make sure to not push it too far to the point where it's uncomfortable to look at the screen. You want to position the monitor at a distance where you're able to comfortably see the entire screen. If you don't understand the concept of peripheral vision, don't worry. You will eventually get used to using your peripheral vision and understand what it is experience will lead you in the right direction. When you're a new OSU player, you realize there's a lot of various effects that go on throughout your playthroughs. Turning all of these off will help you focus more on the notes on the screen instead of the flashy effects. These effects include background video, storyboards, combo bursts, and hit lighting. Snaking sliders and softening filter are based on preference, and I've never used shaders before so I can't say much on that. I personally just turn all of them off. Change the background dim to 100% will also make things easier too, but you guys probably know this already. There are also a few extra things that I recommend changing. Turning off show notification pop-ups instantly during gameplay will get rid of another distraction. You don't want your bitch friend spamming your DMs while you're playing a map. Turning on things like ignore beatmap head sounds, ignore all beatmap skins, use skin sound samples, and always use skin cursor will help keep things consistent with your skin of choice. Most if not all maps these days don't have custom skins for specific beat maps, but there are definitely maps out there that do, so it's better to turn them off unless you really like it. While we're on the topic of skins, let me give my opinion on them. Skins also play a big part in the game as some skins are more flashy and have more stuff, while some are very plain and simple. I kept mine simple to add the minimum number of distractions. That means no fancy patterns on circles or sliders, no fancy cursor stuff, anime pictures, combo bursts, and more. If you're using some flashy skin like the CS Ghost skin, you might have a tough time playing and improving sometimes because there's a fat ass gun on your screen and there's flames shitting out on the side. Even if you're happy with using a fancy skin, I suggest giving a minimalistic skin a try just to see if it'll make any difference when it comes to your in-game performance. 
Lastly, in order to keep things consistent, I don't recommend people switching skins very often. It's sort of a similar concept to switching your tablet area and how you might screw up your reading and aiming if the circles are different. Of course, it's not the case for everybody and different skins will get different results. But I definitely struggled when I switched skins, so I ended up switching back. But before you settle, feel free to explore and try out various skins. This might be controversial, Relax mod. Other than being a 6 digit player's favorite mod, is known for being used purely for fun and being useless in every other way. Although I agree with the statement to some extent, my opinion on Relax mod is a little bit different. It's true that Relax mod is for fun and used to make you feel like you're an OSU professional player, but I believe that there is another use for Relax mod, and it's not aimed. I truly believe that Relax mod can be used to improve your AR reading. However, context and what kind of player you are matters. If you're just starting to play Osu and you don't even have the basic fundamentals of the game embedded deep in your brain and muscles, the Relax mod won't help you. In fact, it'll maybe make things worse. Now, if you're somebody who has plenty of playtime in Osu, in this case, experience with DT and higher AR, it can definitely give you a little bit of a push. I personally had experiences where I would play on a Relax server and play ARs that are slightly higher than what I'm very used to. This allowed me to read those ARs better than before. Sure, you're taking out tapping, which is a core part of the game, but allows you to give more focus on your reading, which will eventually help you get more used to that AR. Using this technique for de-rusting your reading is also quite helpful. Again, I had to emphasize that it'll give you a little bit of a push. So we're talking something like AR 10.33 to AR 10.47. If your limit is something like AR 10 and you try to play AR 11 with Relax, that I don't know what the fuck you're trying to do. It probably won't help you. Just don't become overly dependent on it like a drug addict overdosing on cocaine. This is more of a little trick rather than a tip. It also sort of overlaps with number 4 because it's related to AR reading. The concept is simple. If I want to get better at reading AR 10.33, I will play a little bit of AR 10.4 or 10.47 and go back to 10.33. Then, 10.33 feels easier to read than before because of how your eyes were being adapted to AR 10.4 or 10.7, so something less than that feels slower. However, just playing any random AR 10.4 or 10.47 map and calling it a day might not work. Maps vary in difficulty and patterns, so some feel harder to read despite the AR being the same as other maps that you're able to read. Not to mention, the BPM of a map can be such a game changer when it comes to attempting to properly read notes. Therefore, the best way to get the best possible results is to use the OSA Trainer program to create a difficulty of the same map with just a different AR value. That way, everything feels the same when you go back to the original AR value and you get more familiar with the patterns of the map. This is something that I used to do a lot. Even today, I do it every now and then, especially when I'm de-resting. So feel free to give this a shot to see if it will help you out. How you manage and invest your time into Osu can be a game changer on how fast you improve and what type of player you become. This might be obvious to most of you guys, but I thought it was too important to leave it out. Let me give an example. There's player A and player B. Assume that both players are the same in terms of skill level and progression rates. Player A spends 100% of his time on DT. Player B spends 25% of his time on DT, and the leftover 75% is spent on other parts of the game. If they spend the same amount of time on Osu, it's safe to say that player A will be better at DT than player B. You can also probably say that player B is a better all-around player than player A. However, player A is most likely a higher rank than player B because when it comes to farming PP, being a DT player is just more advantageous. Until I reach 3 digits, it's safe to say that I invested the majority of my time into DT and farm PP. I was terrible at DT when I first started, but after investing hundreds of hours into DT, it eventually helped me to get to where I am today. However, it was also the cause of me not being able to play anything else at the level 1 would expect from my rank. It has improved quite a bit now as I can play things such as Hard Rock and Tech Maps decently, but I'm still shit at streaming. Here is my own progression as a player for comparison. So the point is, you don't have to spend all of your time on DT to see improvement and progression. But just don't have the expectation that you'll be a DT god playing 30 minutes of DT every week. And if you do happen to invest the majority of your time into DT, understand that it will come with consequences and sacrifices of your other skills. When people always ask how to get better at Osu, 
they usually get a reply of, play more. It's more overused than, streamer, please play big black. But why is this response so popular? It's because it's the easiest response to give without being wrong. While I'm also here to tell you to play more, I want to give you some context as to why you should just play more to get better. If you're having fun with a game that has a competitive side to it, such as League, CSGO, or Valorant, you're most likely motivated to get better, which will lead you to naturally play more. If you're wanting to get better at Osu, you're most likely already having fun and or highly motivated. Therefore, it shouldn't be such a hard thing for you to just play more. Having fun will most likely make you more motivated to get better, which will naturally lead you to play more. I understand that Osu can't always be fun. Sometimes being extremely competitive can ruin the fun in a game. It can lead to frustration and bitching. Trust me, I've been there many times. Ah! That's just a part of the process and life as a player. In fact, I say that having some frustration at times is healthy for improvement because it can motivate you further. Each player has their own way of having fun with the game. If you're watching this video, you probably had the most fun playing DT. Therefore, why not just play more DT? When I was a 5-digit player, I probably played DT 90% of the time. I played a lot of maps that were out of my skill level. Not because I thought I could FC 8-star DT maps, but because I just found them to be fun. Didn't mess with my skill level with other parts of Osu such as my basic fundamentals at the time? Yeah, probably. But if I went back in time, I would do the same thing over again because that's how I have fun with the game. I believe that by playing these difficult maps that are completely out of my skill level, I was able to accelerate my growth in DT, but the focus should still be on the fact that I have fun playing those maps. So if you're like me, and enjoy playing maps that are completely out of your skill level, then go for it. Just remember to not play these maps with the expectation that you're going to get better. As long as you're having a lot of fun with the game, you'll probably improve a lot more than you think. So that's about it for this video. If I can think of any more worth noting, I'll let you guys know or make a second video. I try my best to make this video focused on DT, but honestly, it can probably apply to things other than DT as well. Ultimately, anybody can be good at DT, hard rock, or anything if you put in the effort, so be optimistic and keep grinding. I truly believe that anybody can reach the skill level of a 4 or 3 digit caliber player. I do stream on Twitch, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me there. I would appreciate it from the bottom of my heart if you do stop by. You can also join my Discord or comment below. Feedback on my video will also be very appreciated. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Peace!